Good evening, members. Um, I'll start off by reading the webcasting introduction, and uh, I'd like to remind everybody present that this hybrid meeting will be broadcast live to the internet or filmed, and will be capable of repeated viewing or other such use by third parties. Therefore, by participating in this meeting, you are consenting to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. If any public speakers on MS Teams do not wish to have their image captured, they should ensure that their video setting throughout the meeting is turned off and set to audio only. Uh, please also be aware that if technical difficulties interrupt the meeting, that cannot be overcome and may need to adjourn the meeting. Um, so, just to welcome everybody to um, this uh, edition of Area Plan South, um, uh, Wednesday 21st of June 2023. Um, I'm Councillor Kazra SV. I'll be uh, chairing the meeting to my left. I've got Councillor Baldwin um, as my Vice Chair, uh, Vivian Messenger from Democratic Services, uh, Ian Ansell um, as our Planning Officer, and our Webcasting Officer um, in the corner as well. Uh, so, if I move on to... Um, Agenda item three, apologies for absence, Vivian. Chairman, I've got apologies from Bob and Judy Jennings, Councillor Murray and Councillor Lyon. Councillor Jogian. Noted. Uh, yeah. Microphone. Yeah, Chairman, Councillor Barnett, you need Perfect. Um, and moving on to item four, declarations of interest. Councillor Munn. Uh, for myself and Caroline, you will see we, we are neighbours to the second, um, uh, the second uh, application. And I did put in a holding and fairly mild objection to it. So. Uh, I don't think I have a prejudicial interest, but I think we had better both withdraw for the discussion of that item. Thank you. Anybody else with any other declarations of interest? Uh, I'll, I'll declare a non-pecuniary interest. I attended the um, Chigwell Parish Council meeting uh, when uh, application EPF 050322 was discussed. Um, I attended as an observer member. Um, and uh, haven't fettered my discretion, so I'll uh, remain in the meeting. Councillor Sanger? Um, just to note, um, I, um, I had a conversation with the Chair of Planning Parish Council, Chibble Parish Council as well, just to get some feedback on the, on the application as well. Thank you. And Councillor Barlow? Um, just to declare that I've also had um, a conversation with um, the Chibble Residents Association regarding this, and their views as well. Um, Councillor Morgan. I've also got... Mike. Uh, is that working? No, that's working now. I was also at the parish meeting where they discussed it, but mine's non-pecuniary. Great, thank you. Um, moving on to meet, uh, minutes, um, and to confirm the meet, uh, minutes of the last meeting uh, of the subcommittee held on 26th of April 2023. Can we take those as agreed? Agreed. Um, and then moving on to item six, any other business? And um, I'd like to just bring in... Um, item four. So moving on to any other business, and I'll bring in Graham Courtney, our senior planning officer, who's on the uh, MS Teams uh, link. Graham, would you mind just giving the uh, the committee an update as to uh, the application, which was discussed at the last uh, area plans meeting um, relating to I think five Nafferton Rise, where there was a site visit recently. Uh, yes, no problem, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, good evening, members. Um, yeah, just a, a, a quick update. Uh, you may notice in a minute that uh, the uh, decision taken uh, last at the last committee meeting uh, was to uh, for North Fire Master Rise was to uh, get some clarity around the site boundaries. 
and location of these, uh, and also to undertake a site visit, which has, has been done. Uh, the minutes do specifically say that it will be coming to the next South Committee meeting, but obviously it is not on this agenda. Uh, I just wanted to explain the reason for that is that we uh, did receive some revised plans from the, uh, the agent. Uh, it, it appears that there may have been some discussion between the applicant and the neighbours, uh, and there, there are some revised plans that will be in front of members uh, at the next, uh, hopefully the next meeting, uh, where they are looking to reduce the scale of the development uh, to appease uh, the, the neighbours uh, slightly. Uh, so, but unfortunately, the, the, the date we received those it didn't give us enough time to go through the necessary uh, consultation uh, and then get it on this agenda. Uh, so, in agreement with the, uh, the, the applicant, we have uh, pushed that to the next agenda. Uh, and hopefully, we're hoping that that will be in front of you uh, next month uh, with the revised plans for you to see. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Courtney. Um, and if I move on to item seven, uh, site visits, um, would any member like to propose a site visit in regards to any application on today's agenda? Councillor Morgan? Yes, I'd like. I'd like a site visit for Chigwell Nursery, please. Just, I think lots of people need to go and have a look. We have a few issues there. Would you, yeah, would you like to highlight, Councillor Morgan, what issues um, you'd come across or, or like the committee to, to be aware of? I think it, there is a very detailed report in the, um, yeah. in the agenda pack. And, the um, fact that, to begin with, we have one exit in and out onto a main road, um, the stain, sustainability parking, the fact that it was in Greenbelt, is now not in Greenbelt and has been put back in Greenbelt. We've got an endless list. If you want to go through everything, I'm quite yeah. happy to. I, th I think the fact those, that uh, I, I appreciate what, you, what you're saying, but I think those issues would very much be sort of welcome as part of a debate um, in front of the, the plan committee here. I think majority of members may well be familiar with the site. I know, you know, the majority of the Chigwell councillors would have, um, you know, used the, the, the nursery site at some point. Um, I'm happy to take on the views of other members of the committee this evening or um, Vivian. As I say, you can, she can propose it, but it has to be seconded, so, and agreed we all voted on it. So, so uh, having sought advice from our Democratic Services Officer, I think you know you can make a recommendation for a site visit or propose a recommendation for a site visit, but it will need to be seconded, and uh, we can have a vote before the committee uh, here this evening. Thank you. Do we have a seconder okay, for sec Councillor Morgan? Okay, Councillor Barlow. Um, Chairman, if I could just come in, we've got a lot of people here tonight. Um, residents as well have made the effort to come to listen to this uh, application. Um, I think it would be, un be un very unfair for them to be turned away today. Any site visits really should have been proposed ahead of this meeting. Uh, but I'm happy to listen. Uh, Councillor Wixie. I don't think under the Constitution, and I stand to be corrected on this, that I appreciate what Councillor Sunger has said. But it's a decision of the committee on the night whether or not a site visit takes place. So you can't do it in advance without reference to the committee. Agreed. But on that point, though, I do, I do think it's good courtesy to, you know, alert or have some form of a discussion with the chairman of the, the committee to make aware to members to, you know, um, but take, take, your board on, take your point on board, Councillor Wixey. Did you, want, did, you want, did you want to come back? Well, well I, I think it might be worth having a look at the Constitution on that. I, I agree it's inconvenient for people if they've come here, especially for that item, and then it gets postponed. But, but that, that's the situation we're in with the Constitution as it currently stands. Uh, Councillor Williamson. Th thank you, Chair. Um, yes, the, the, I think Councillor Wixley is absolutely correct in line with the Constitution. But we have, for the last uh, 18 months, 12 months, been trying to preempt site visits being called on the night of the meeting to obviate the need for people coming and um, being sent away and coming back next month. 
I think some of the points that were raised under this site visit, i.e. that it's green belt, is, is not going to be looked at in, in a site visit at all. It, 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 it is no longer green belt because it's, it's in the local plan. Um, I, 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 my, my view is that this should go to a vote. It should be proposed. It should, if there's a seconder, it should go to a vote. If the majority ask for a site visit, we go on a site visit. If the majority don't, we don't. Okay. Councillor Morgan, if you wanted to come back in. Yes, please. Then in which case, why do we have it as item seven, site visits? And, and just to refer back to Councillor Wicks's point, he is absolutely right. It is something that is you know, discussed as part of the, the meeting when the committee, um, or when the agenda is published and when the committee meets. But I, I do really do strongly feel that actually, you know, having had some form of an idea or having had some form of intimation that actually it's something that would trigger a site visit, it would have been helpful to either raise it to democratic services or contact me as the chairman directly, um, in which case we could have at least made residents or, you know, members of the public who are here not have an unnecessary journey. But I, I think moving forward, it would be wise to take a vote from the committee as to whether they want to go ahead and, and you know, uh, get a site visit for this, Councillor Patel. Thank you, Chairman. I'm just interested to understand what, what, what benefit a site visit is going to have, um, considering the openness of this site. And um, it's known to many members on this committee. Um, and I'm sure you can, you can, you can view the site from, from the road. So, and into it. So I'm interested to understand what benefit a site visit is going to have in determining this application. Members, I think it would be best to, to go ahead with a vote. So, um, Vivian. Could all members that are for the side visit raise their hand? All members that are for a site visit raise their hand. Six. Those against? Eight, oh sorry, te ten, I didn't see, yep. And those abstaining, one. So that's carried, Chairman, that there isn't a site visit. Perfect. Um, so just moving on to agenda item eight then, uh, which is planning application EPF 050322, uh, Chigwell Nursery, High Road Chigwell, um, and I'll pass over to our planning officer, Ian Ansel, uh, for his presentation. Uh, thank you, Chair. Good evening, members. Um, I've, we've got a series of slides uh, to look at as we go through. Um, the site comprises the existing garden centre, the sales area and the, the frontage land on the north side of the high street. And on this plan, it's the area hatched in yellow. Um, the site has progressed through all stages of the local plan and is allocated for residential redevelopment. The adoption of the local plan results in the site having been removed from the green belt and is to be treated as such in considering the application. Uh, the aerial shows the, the general context, the cluster of sales buildings in the, the centre of the site, uh, the, the hard service and, and low beds and display areas to the west and the parking areas and the, the existing landscaped areas on the frontage. And the application excludes all of the land forming part of the nurseries, including land to the north, the glass houses, um, the tide dwelling and the frontage parking on, on that part of the site. So the application proposes residential redevelopment in line with the local plan site allocation for the site and comprising a mix of houses and flats. Buildings comprise two, two and a half and three storey elements. Vehicle access is from the existing entrance with minor adaptations and pedestrian connectivity includes links across the site, across the frontage and a separate pedestrian access towards the southern end of the site. And that, and that can be seen, I don't know if the cursor will come up. This is the, uh, the access. Sorry. 
So the scheme includes a landscape-led approach, included protected areas of trees and shrubs around the boundaries, a communal open space, which also includes a suds feature, a swale, and a local play area. And the site, as I said, on the frontage is car free. We'll return to this plan later. So looking at typical built forms, the, the top elevation shows the buildings that will front the high road. These are flats, but they are designed as to appear as pairs of houses. Um, the, 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 the flatted block, these flatted blocks include active frontages on both sides of the buildings with ground floor flats accessed from the high road and the upper flats accessed from the rear. The members could see the mix of materials, uh, lo follow local, um, typical local material mix, brick, balding, and some elements of render. And the proportions of the buildings seek to be consistent with the locality in broad terms. Uh, the low ele elevation shows a section of the, the um, houses at the rear part of the site and they're highlighted in green on the, um, the, the location plan at the side. Um, these are two, two, uh, two and a half storeys primarily, broken up by garages, um, just to, to reduce the volume. The, the, the upper elevation on this is the block of houses behind the flat, um, and they are two storeys, um, with, the, with added rooms on the end units. The, the lower block, again highlighted on the, the site plan, is the, is the side-on block to the front of the site, and again, two-storey. So a, a general pattern of two-storey buildings emerge a, across the housing element. The flatted blocks, these are two of the blocks at the, the lower end of the site, taken advantage of the, the, the reduction in ground levels. The upper block backs onto or fronts onto the open, uh, open space and backs onto the adjoining uh, retained nursery buildings. And the lower elevation shows the block that sits at the lower end of the site. Now, this is the landscape master plan, which is... <laughs> Oh, it's gone on here, but oh, here it goes. You're right. So this is the landscape master plan. As you can see, uh, there's a buffer zone around the outer edge of the site, and there are areas of landscaping across the the, the rest of the development. The lands the buffer around the edge is designed to be outside the cur domestic curtilages, and will be maintained by the site management company and new planting supplements existing areas of tree planting as part of that buffer zone. So returning to the layout, the main issues are detailed in the report. In terms of the local plan, the scheme is compliant with the allocation of 65 units. It also includes on-site policy compliant affordable housing provision, including a mix of one, two and three bedroom units which has been agreed by housing officers as an appropriate mix for the site. In terms of the delivery of the local plan, the, the delivery of allocated sites is integral to meeting policy targets and reducing pressure for development in less appropriate areas. Early delivery of an allocated site in Chickwell would be significant in terms of resisting inappropriate development. The scale of built form responds to the general character of the settlement, mainly two and three storeys, element of flats, but primarily houses in the, in the core, and the buildings on the frontage, as I've already said, are designed to look like houses. Extensive in curtilage parking, heavily landscaped on the frontage, and the consistent materials palette. However, development on this scale will present challenges. In particular, with the relationship with the nearby listed buildings, Little West Hatch in particular, which is the adjoining site to the southwest. The conservation officer recognises that the historic setting of that building 
was irrevocably changed by the establishment of the garden centre, such that the setting now reads as the building and its immediate frontage, rather than the wider historic context and the, the, the wider land that may well have been part of the site. So this setting, the, the building and its frontage, is protected in the evolution of the scheme. There's also a listed building on the golf course, or the golf club opposite. This sits within its modern context and is not impacted by the development in the conservation officer's view. Representations raise issues around parking, but it is noted that the scheme provides 89 parking spaces overall, which in an accessible location where rail and bus services are within walking distance, represents good provision. The access is based on the, the existing location and the highway authority have not objected either on the access or on the level of parking. Wider infrastructure impacts have been addressed by way of a legal agreement and these provisions are set out on page 20 of the report. And they include education, health, FSAC mitigation measures and wider contributions to local public amenity provision as required by the IDP infrastructure delivery plan. The education and health contributions fully meet the requirements of the relevant providers. Since the report was prepared, an additional requirement to complete a management plan for the open spaces and landscape areas have been added. So the de development delivers the local plan allocated site with appropriate level of development established through the local plan process. The scheme also meets affordable housing needs. Impact on the character and amenity of the local area has been considered but is viewed as limited and issues identified in the application process in this regard have been addressed in the evolution of the scheme. As such, Officers now consider proposal delivers a high standard of development for the site and is broadly supported. Officers are aware that members have been contacted directly recently about gas boilers within the scheme, um, but this has been addressed in condition 19, which is desired to limit the impact of any boilers on air quality and is a standard process that we use. Any members that have had time to review the conditions may have picked up some duplication. Uh, we're aware of that and we've been through them and the, the final version that we're working on um, rectifies those errors. So subject therefore to completion of the legal agreement as set out in the report and subject to the conditions, officers are recommending approval for the application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Ansel. Um, apologies, members. I also uh, needed to um, uh, state that I do intend on being a voting chairman uh, for this meeting. Um, we've got three um, speakers on this item. Uh, Mrs. Joanne Butler, uh, who's one of the objectors and is here in person. Yeah. Yep, you have three minutes. Okay, so we've lived as a family at Little West Hatch for over 30 years and have always enjoyed our privacy over that time in this listed historic setting. Now, part of the proposed development is to be built on the sliver of land between the nursery and Little West Hatch, and this is in relative proximity to Little West Hatch, which is, as I've said before, a listed property. This land has been unattended for at least 30 years and is dense with brambles and overgrowth. The Council's report states that only glimpsed views from the nursery of Little West Hatch are possible. However, this is because the trees on our land are full of leaves and had this report been carried out in winter time, our house and gardens would be in full view as the trees would be bare. This perspective is taken directly from the nursery and not from the approximate 100 foot densely overgrown sliver of land where the proposed houses would be built. Your report does not correctly take into account the close proximity of these houses to our house and gardens, leaving us totally overlooked and without the privacy afforded to this setting. Whilst we are not entirely opposed to a development next door, what we are opposed to is houses and flats overlooking our house and garden directly. 
At present, there is no buffer as suggested in your report, only a few trees in our garden in full leaf during the summer months only. And we are baffled by your report stating there is a thick buffer only allowing glimpsed views. I would love to invite any members who may wish to visit for themselves so we may confirm the fundamental errors in the Council's report. Another error in the report states that Little West Hatch land has been rapidly encroached on with development. However, having lived here for 30 years, we can categorically confirm that there's been no encroachment of our land and therefore no enclosure of the property and also no significant change to the area directly surrounding us. So perhaps Mr Fred Kayla could clarify that statement in his report. We wish there to be mature, tall trees planted along the perimeter of the nursery land to ensure there would be a buffer to preserve our privacy all year round and preserve the setting for a Grade 2 listed property. And I hope the members have had a chance to read the report compiled by Kath Layton, Senior Heritage Consultant of Heritage Architecture Limited, which details a much more in-depth, non-biased report on the setting of Little West Hatch. And Mr Ian Ansell has a copy of this report for your reference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and we have a, a representative from Chigwell Parish Council um, here in person as well, Councillor Selina Jeffcoat. You have three minutes. Thank you. We at Chigwell Parish Council understand the need for development and note the proposal now meets EFDC affordable housing requirements of 40%. Our now adopted local plan makes it very clear in the absence of a local traffic appraisal, the starting point for parking in all new developments is Essex parking standards. Our local plan requires this site should have 128 parking spaces. Chigwell councillors already know the problems previous development with inadequate parking are causing in Chigwell. Another one will add to those issues. Officers have advised that at the time of the application was consulted on, the land still lay in the greenbelt. The adoption of the plan means the site no longer holds greenbelt status, and these objections should be given no substantive weight. However, the audit trail clearly shows it isn't as simple as that. Officers have told us in writing as part of their report to you that the Greenbelt boundary has changed. The question that needs to be addressed is when and under whose authority. The examination process of the local plan highlighted several anomalies, anomalies in the plan where allocated sites were in Greenbelt. This is where the main modifications process came in. The inspector reviewed each anomaly and made modifications to the local plan. The written submission to you states that um, when this was submitted last year, Chig 5 was in Greenbelt, and that it's been the local plan that has removed it. But that's not the position the inspector took with all the other Greenbelt allocated sites within our local plan. During the main modifications, each site was considered, and either a modification to redraw the boundary was made, or the site was removed. Neither of these actions took place with Chig 5. It was in Greenbelt. The Council's own Greenbelt assessment in 2016 shows that, and it describes it as being part of a parcel of very high importance. The question is, why would the inspector not highlight this anomaly and require it to be corrected, as they did with all the other proposed local plan allocations in Greenbelt? When we look at the submission version of the plan in 2017, it shows why this may not have been picked up on. The local plan map from 2017 shows Chig 5 as not in Greenbelt, despite the fact we've been told at the time it was. If the inspector received the wrong information about the Greenbelt status of Chig 5, that's pro potentially a problem for this council. You'll hear from councillors and have heard from residents how upset they are about it. Knowing that the land is still in Greenbelt, and get, they may have the chance to challenge the land is still in Greenbelt. If the council makes a decision on the basis the land is not, you are open to risk of challenge. There's no clear audit trail showing that Chick 5 has been properly removed from Greenbelt. As such, any application needs to demonstrate very special circumstances in order for it to be approved. The parish council objections stand. It does not meet Essex parting standards, and it continues to consider that the special circumstances have not been met by this application, and it is inappropriate development in Greenbelt. At the very least, we urge you to defer to establish what the proper legal status of this land is. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Jeffco. And uh, we have a final speaker on this application, Mr. Richard uh, Winsborough, who's the applicant and is here in person. Good evening, Chair, Councillors. My name is Richard Winsborough, and I'm the applicant and planning director at Scott Properties, who have been working with the owners since about 2015. The main points have been adequately dealt with by uh, your officers who we've worked with throughout the application process, and your officers' approach to the application has been thorough and resulted in a scheme that has no objections from any of the technical consultees, including highways, drainage, landscape ecology, heritage and urban design. Being here tonight has been a long time in the making. As a brownfield site, it was identified as being suitable for development during the early work on the local plan, which was then endorsed by the local plan inspector at examination and subsequently removed from the Greenbelt when the local plan was adopted. Working with your planning officers, we took the scheme through a pre-application process, including going to a quality review panel and public consultation. These officer meetings have directly informed the scheme in front of you this evening, which delivers the full allocation requirement of 65 new homes in a mixture of dwelling types, from apartments to detached houses. It also delivers 26 on-site affordable homes in a mix and tenure split that's been agreed with your housing offices. Whilst the site itself is no longer in the Greenbelt, three of our boundaries do form new Greenbelt boundaries. Particular attention has been paid to ensuring that, where necessary, these boundaries remain in the control of a management company who will be responsible for looking after them rather than individual homeowners. And this arrangement is secured by the Section 106. The western boundary of our site is shared with the Grade 2 listed Little West Hatch, and there are glimpse views between the sites through existing trees and vegetation on the boundary. But following input from the planning officer and conservation officer, we've introduced a five metre landscape buffer along the shared boundary to ensure there's a suitably green boundary treatment to reduce views between the sites. This buffer, again, will not be passed to homeowners to be looked after, instead remaining in the management company to ensure that it stays and matures as a landscape buffer. Your conservation officer has viewed the site reviewed the original heritage impact assessment which was undertaken uh, over the winter of 2021 so it has been viewed without the trees in leaf your conservation officers reviewed the neighbors representations and concluded that the scheme preserved the significance of little west hatch in its setting finally we've been working with your officers to progress the section 106 and we've got a document that's agreed, so subject, of course, to this evening's debate and vote. The financial contributions and the affordable housing referred to in the officer's report will be secured and spent locally exactly as written. I do hope you can support the proposals in line with your officer's recommendation, and thank you for your time. Thank you. And um, uh, thank you, Mr Winsborough. And to, to, to open up discussion to uh, the councillors, we've got two ward councillors. Uh, for Chigwell Village, myself and Councillor Sunger. Uh, Councillor Sunger, did you want to say anything? Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. Can I congratulate you on your position as new Chairman of Plan South for this municipal year? <clears throat> Before I ask or make any uh, mention of what, about this application, could we just have clarification from our planning officer? Uh, it's been clearly stated during your presentation that the, it's in the roof agreement. Could we have that? confirm before we actually go ahead. Thank you. Uh, yes, Chair. Our, our view is that the site, by going through the local plan process, has been removed from the green belt. Um, in, in terms of the, the impact of the, the main modifications, clearly the inspector didn't seek changes to the boundary of this site, so was, as far as we're concerned, satisfied with the allocation and the removal of site from Greenbelt. Thank you, Chairman. So that leads me on to the site itself. Um, being a Chigwell Village councillor now for many, many years, I know this site very well. It's uh, not too far from where I live, and I often go past this quite often. My concerns uh, would be that if you try to get out of Chigwell during the peak times in the morning, and in the evenings, it's virtually impossible. We have, you could be sitting in traffic uh, for 45 minutes to about an hour from West at School, where this site is uh, very close to, to the Jolly Wheelers, the, the pub, um, for, for a very long time, in tra sitting in traffic, and that's with cars back to back, bumper to bumper. Um, and that doesn't align with the district's uh, policy of 
being carbon neutral by 2030. However, um, what I have an issue with is the number of units on this site that's been proposed. Um, I feel that there are too many units that are going to go onto this site and this will cause uh, issues with vehicles coming out of the singular access onto the main road. We have a school not far from this site and that would have an impact on the safety of our, of our children if this number of units are allowed to be built, the number of units that are allowed to be built. Um, and also you have people that walk down that particular area. Um, the pavements are very small, um, so children going past, and then you've got this one singular vehicle access. Um, I don't think there's enough local amenities for that number of units in the area. We don't even have a doctor's surgery in Chigwell. I know that's it's a, a contribution to GP uh, services, that's in section 106. Um, but it will have an impact on the, on the local communities with the number of uh, units going up. There are 65 units that have been proposed, 89, visitors, 89 parking spaces. There will be people that will be driving in and out of that. That's a lot of cars coming in and out for those number of units. I'm going to struggle to support this application on the basis of the volume of traffic that's going to put on the roads. It really is going to be a difficult decision for me to support this at all. I'm happy to listen to other councillors uh, on, on the panel here tonight, um, but my view is that we, we had a similar case with the nunnery opposite that, and for the same reasons we knocked it back. But the number of units on this site, 65, I think are far too many. Um, but I'm open to uh, listen to other councillors. Thank you, Councillor well. Thank you. Um, if we can go to Councillor Barlow, another one of the children. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'd like to raise some similar issues as um, um, our fellow councillor just, just mentioned. Um, but in addition, the planning officer mentioned that with the local plan, um, that's when um, the site was taken out of Greenbelt. But I'd like to know when that was and by whom, because by looking at the quality review panel that our friend um, report mentioned just now in 2019, I don't know if there's won't be one since, it clearly said it was in Greenbelt, um, and also mentioned a lot of the issues that have been brought up this evening. Um, I've been looking at the S106, um, um, and I'm a bit concerned because when we've Bought, um, we've discussed S106s before, very rarely have, has that money been given to Chigwell itself, and it's been used or uh, mentioned for other things within Epping Forest. We have a lot of figures here. Very few I can actually see would probably relate directly to Chigwell itself. Um, and um, the council have just mentioned about the GP. We don't actually have a GP surgery. 32,000, that's not even going to pay for a nurse. Um, and let's be honest here, what's 30, what 32,000 going, going to do on part of the NHS as well? That doesn't cover much of a wage. I'm really wondering what that would actually cover. And even if you were to say that one of the other GP surgeries in the area, how is that going to benefit all these people that are going to be living in, in these houses? It doesn't kind of make sense. The infrastructure is not there, and that amount of money is not going to help us at all. I mean, it's going to take me a long time to go through all of the other, all of the other breakdowns of the S106 here, but I think you can get my gist with that. It's just, it's just that for that particular one isn't just enough on its own. He's also mentioned that the visitor parking exists within the road network, um, and that is just, as our council has already mentioned, that that's, that is just not sustainable um, for us at all. So thank you. Councillor Morgan. Thank you. As it's been mentioned previously, but I have looked at the maps on our Green Belt review and it showed Chig 5 inside the Green Belt in August 2016, but the submission version policy map of the local plan in December 2017 mapped it outside the Green Belt. Yet planners have told us it was in the Green Belt last year. So, will officers please clarify to the council? Was the removal of Chig 5 from Greenbelt done before the original submission of the plan? 
in 2017, or was it agreed by an inspector as a main modification during the examination of the local plan? And if so, can I have the reference and the date it was done, please? I'll revert to Mr Ansell as the panic officer here. OK, I'll try and deal with some of the, the matters that have been raised, particularly in terms of the Greenbelt boundary. The, the, the local plan was adopted in March, and at that point, sites allocated in the local plan that were previously in the Greenbelt were removed from the Greenbelt. And, and this is not the only such site, and, and um, there, there are sites across the district that have been removed from the green belt by virtue of this process. Um, to try and clarify further on the, the question of Councillor Morgan, the, the, the 2017 submission version of the local plan first identified the sites in a, in a, a collated way. And um, so as it's gone through that process, um, we've come to the stage where on adoption of the local plan in March, uh, the site was removed. Um, uh, I'll also pick up, if, if you don't mind, Chair, on a couple of other things. Um, on the allocation section 106 monies, um, the, the, uh, effectively the contributions are ring-fenced in that the education contribution goes to the County Council, the, the health contribution, which is the, the contribution that the health authority have specifically asked for, will go to them. Uh, and the, the other provisions from the infrastructure delivery plan will go into local projects. And that, that's managed centrally by the council and uh, delivered from there. Um, yeah. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Mr. Ansel. Uh, Councillor Chris Fond. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman, and uh, welcome to the Chair. Uh, I have a few major concerns about this. I accept, of course, that it is an allocated site in the local plan, but I've no doubt that Mr Ansell will tell us for how many dwellings it was uh, allocated. I, I don't always agree with everything that Councillor Sunga says, but I do entirely agree with him that uh, the um, number of dwellings proposed for the site is, in my mind, excessive and will give rise to the sort of problems that he, um, he, he mentioned earlier on. I have one or two specific points on the application. Now, the uh, historic uh, assessment, the heritage assessment, is done by a person who I very much respect and who was indeed conservation officer in this council for a number of years. But I do believe that as the owner of, West, of the uh, adjoining house said, uh, the proposal will have a significant effect on the setting of the listed building. Uh, I believe that has been underplayed in the report. And very, very strangely, the report by Mr Sutton ignores the fact that Chigwell High Road is a Roman road, a Roman road from London to Kaiser or Margus, which is Dunmo, and there was a major Roman settlement, Duralitum, uh, to the other end of Chigwell Parish that he has not mentioned that this, which is this site, which is not in my mind a brownfield site, but has uh, uh, maintained agrarian and horticultural um, uses over the last 50 years or so, and was previously just pasture land, that I think there is a strong need for um, archeological investigations once the removal of the uh, brick structures and uh, the infrastructure for the nursery have gone. But my major concern with this, that could be conditioned, I accept, but uh, what I think is, is much more difficult, and uh, Chairman, I might seek to move a motion on this after I've finished, if you'll permit me, is that uh, Mr Ansell, this describe this as a sustainable site. Now, how near to facilities does a site have to become? 
to be sustainable and thus uh, reduce the amount of parking. I, I, I don't normally agree with Chigwell Parish Council and everything they say about parking or the inadequacy of the Chigwell Loop Line, but uh, I am pretty sure that 99% of exits and entrances to this site, if developed, would be by car. And that sits very badly with um, our uh, requirements to become carbon neutral, and it is not a sustainable uh, site, in my view, to walk uh, um, 10, 12 minutes, 15 minutes perhaps, towards Chigwell Station, whence there is an adequate but not attractive service, and more to Woodford Bridge, where you can get the number 275 bus. Uh, and um, for those reasons, uh, the bus route in along Chigwell High Road is a school days only bus with, I think, three in the morning and, and one in the evening, or one or four in the morning and one in the evening. That is not going to uh, assist at all the travelling of the people concerned in this estate, new residents, they would be, um, I think, entirely reliant on their cars, which is not good for the sustainability of EFDC. Uh, perhaps Mr. Ansel can remind us of how many dwellings this was allocated for in the local plan. I'm pretty sure it wasn't 65. I didn't attend but the uh, EIP hearings on Chigwell, but I don't recollect having seen this the increase at 65, which I agree with uh, Councillor Sanger is excessive. So uh, my view, Chairman, is if you would permit me that I would like to move a motion uh, to defer consideration of this, this application on uh, the basis of the inadequate um, uh, appraisal of the uh, effect on the listed building and to go back to the applicant, <coughs> officers to go back to the applicant in order to see whether a unilateral undertaking could be uh, obtained in order to provide uh, some money out of this gross development value 50 million pound site for some uh, public transport between Chigwell Village and Woodford Bridge. So if I can find a, a seconder at some point, I would like to move that. And at the same time, we could accommodate the uh, site visit, which was asked for by uh, Councillor Barlow. Uh, thank you, Councillor Punter. I'll defer to um, Mr. Ansell if he's able to answer the question uh, with regards to how many units were allocated for this site. Um, initially, and then I'll come back to, to your second point. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I can confirm that the allocation, as I mentioned in my initial presentation, is for 65 dwellings. Okay. Um, before I come on to a motion, I, I just wanted to pitch in with a couple of comments, being the other ward councillor for Chigwell Village. And, fully appreciate and recognise a lot of what has been discussed already so far today, but I think it would also be very useful for us to have a bit of a discussion on some of the actual um, material planning considerations for this application, which are, which are really, really important. And for me, it does sit very um, uncomfortably. I, I do have some very serious concerns, um, not least uh, the uh, comment made by the Trees and Landscape Officer um, from EFC Melinda Barham, who um, had uh, also submitted an objection back in April, um, which is uh, in the documents pack listed with this application. The, the main issues which I foresee, you know, I fully take on board the points about parking and traffic and, and of course, road safety for pupils that are, you know, walking to, um, uh, to West Hatch, as well as parents who will be dropping off children at peak hours and collecting them as well. All of those are very genuine, valid concerns, which you know, uh, as a resident of Chigwell and there's somebody who uses that arterial road very, very frequently, you know, it is something which will invariably have a negative impact. But in terms of some of the planning considerations, the things which sit very, very uncomfortably with me are actually the, um, the, the negative impacts that it will have on the residents of uh, Little West Hatch, the listed building, of course, but also the loss of amenity space for residents um, 
within the surrounding boundaries on Lindhurst Rise, on Tudor Close, on Chilwell High Road. These are residents that enjoy an uh, absolutely you know, breathtaking view of unspoilt trees, of you know, very well-kept um, green land, even if it has been formally removed from Greenbelt. And my fear would be with this development, actually, we you know, result in loss of amenity space for those residents within those roads. Um, the other main point coming back to the actual development itself is that I think it's highly out of keeping and it's incongruent with what the local buildings are around the area. You know, that stretch of high road is, is a very, very, um, it's, it's a very character-driven part and actually a new development such as this, you know, squeezing in 65 units will invariably change that landscape and it will change it forever. We're very, very fortunate in Chigwell Village that we have pockets of paradise. We have, you know, Chigwell Nursery, we have Grange Farm, we have other areas um, overlooking the Cortlands estate. And one of the main issues that I have is that if any development is minded to be approved this evening, actually that piece of, you know, land and that piece of um, uh, amenity will be lost forever. And there's nothing to mitigate us from future development where it's 65 units at the moment and actually the green belt boundaries have been changed slightly you know there's nothing to say that in the future the new boundary that has been uh, proposed will also incur development in the future as well so that's another very valid point for us to take on board um, and I think also the point about overlooking the um, the objector as the resident at Little uh, West Hatch had quite rightly mentioned these are residents that have lived there for you know, three decades, and actually having two ginormous towers built alongside it, or you know, 65 units rather, will have a have a massive overlooking effect on them. So, these are some of the the material planning considerations that I had noted as part of the officer's report, um, and I can kind of get a, a, a feel of what direction um, members of the committee are uh, sort of heading towards. Do we have any other final comments? Yeah. Can I go to Councillor Brooks? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I mean, it's quite hard for us, whichever town you live in, um, to see what a nursery um, converted into a, a housing development. Um, uh, Lautonians would sympathise. The only problem I have is that, for those of us who started the long process of the local plan about over 10 years ago, um, that it has been identified, this site was offered, and it was identified. Um, so it does strike me, what, going down today and visiting it again, as I'm not Alan Titchmarch, I don't buy many plants, but you mentioned that the area with the glass houses was out of the um, uh, proposed development, and I didn't quite catch the second one. Um, and the bungalow where the, um, that's down at the bottom on the right, it, th that's included, I assume. Yeah, that's at the bottom of the car park. The, the okay, up. so... Um, Sorry. Okay, so to clarify, the, the, um, the bungalow... ..is here, in the, in the centre of, of the, the adjoining land, um, and that is... Uh, has a tired agricultural worker condition on it historically. The glass houses are the area at the, just to the north, as we see, and the car parking areas at the southern end of the site, where you, you, you go in at present and there's a, a, a high level car park, and then you go into the second bit and then there's a, a, a further bit there. So the, the, the middle car park and the lower car park, shall we say, um, are excluded from the site. Um, at the early stages of the local plan process, there was discussion about including all of that land in the allocation as well. But because that land was genuinely used for agricultural purposes, it was uh, that was uh, resisted the, the, after the call for sites. But the the application site was it was was not in agricultural use. It's in retail use because it's the retail element. That, that gives it that use, and that was why it was was that's not an appropriate retail use, even as a garden centre is not a greenbelt use, whereas nurseries and horticulture are. So that that's broadly what how the the, the, the split um, came about. Um, 
There were a couple of other, couple of other things just to mention uh, that from your comments, Chair. One is about the Trees and Landscape Officer comment. That was an early, at an early stage in the application, and the, the current scheme has the support of the, the, the Trees and Landscape Officer. The green belt boundaries will not now be reviewed again until the local plan itself is reviewed in five, ten years' time, whenever that comes up. And at, at that point, um, again, depending on the pressures on the district to deliver on um, land for development, uh, then sites will be reviewed again at that point. But currently, the, any application for the adjoining land in particular would be resisted because that land is still in the green belt. Can I come on to Councillor Williamson? Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I, I think I'm living in a parallel universe because we sat here for 13 years going through a local plan. We discussed every site in minute detail. It went backwards and forwards. This site was one of the allocated sites for 65 units. We have a scheme in front of us for 65 units, 40% affordability. I, it is no longer in the green belt once the local plan was adopted. Um, I, I don't understand half of this debate. We are reopening a debate. We started 13 years ago when we started looking at this site as to whether it should be an allocated site. <laughs> it is an allocated site. It is in the local plan. It was in there for 65 units, and we have 65 units. Um, I, I have some minor comments about the actual scheme, but I think the debate so far tonight has been about there should be no scheme, or there should be a lot less units, or whatever. We've had this debate over 13 years, and we're starting it again now. If we've got problems with the design, with, with the landscaping, uh, whatever. I, I, I don't see how we can go away from the 65 units we've been debating for 13 years. Um, lots of people don't like lots of the allocated sites in a local plan, but they are a fact. And we have a housing crisis. We need homes. We need affordable homes. And we've got 65 sitting here. I, 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 I think I'm in a parallel universe. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Kaufman. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Welcome to the post. Um, so, to the answer, in my opinion, to Councillor Williamson, Williamson's issue is the council had a limited budget. The council had a limited budget in its assessment of the sites. And I don't recall the 65 unit number, but clearly we did not produce a scheme that's a relatively arbitrary number that we produced and thought. But when we actually see a firm of architects lay out 65 units on this site, it doesn't work. It clearly doesn't work. This would change, um, don't be too dramatic, the, the character of Chigwell if this scheme went ahead. It's completely inappropriate. It is overdevelopment. Its impact on the setting of the adjacent listed building is very unwelcome. And it just does not look like a Chigwell scheme. So this is trying to cram as many units in as possible, and we've gone past that. We should be looking for exemplars of design of development, and this is not it. So it's overdevelopment. The issue is I don't want a car park there either. So what we've got is 148 habitable rooms, I think mean bedrooms, which could be a car per bedroom, I don't know. We've got provision of 89, and we haven't got anything for visitor car parking, which should be 10, 15, according to the Essex Guide. Therefore, we should be having over 100 car spaces, and that would turn this into Chigwell Station car park if there was one. We don't want Chigwell Station car park in this part of Chigwell. Therefore, there are too many houses proposed. So it clearly has been identified. Um, there should be some development. The 40% is welcome. The design, in my opinion, is absolutely not. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kaufman. Uh, if I can go on to Councillor Patel, Annika Patel. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I echo a lot of the comments that Councillor Kaufman has made. I've, I have serious concerns about the design of this scheme. Um, you know, there's a unique opportunity here to, to do something um, which can enhance the, the locality. I don't think <coughs> the way in which this, uh, this layout has been uh, presented this evening does that. Um, I've, I'm not keen on the, um, on, on the flatted um, elements of this scheme being right up its, um, against the roadside. Um, I think 
when we consider the, um, um, the comments made by um, the first speaker this evening, I think um, that can be addressed through planning condition um, by having mature over, uh, evergreen um, tree shrubs on, on that side so that it prevents uh, any overlooking from this development. Um, with regards to the section 106 monies, um, parish councils are entitled to um, put forward um, a, a request for, a, for section 106 monies. Um, and I appreciate the comments that have been made that um, this money is not going to be used. Well, well, it's going to be used on throughout the district and not in the locality. But uh, you know, as, as um, Mr. Ansell has clarified, that um, the, the council has um, jurisdiction over where that money is spent. I would much rather Section 106 monies being spent or invested on a on a, on a crossing, um, particularly in line with where the school is um, um, situated, because that would be something beneficial to um, to residents. Um, Again, just going back to the design, I think the, the, the terracing, the, the, the terracing um, um, section of, of this scheme that's been proposed, I think something better could have been presented towards committee this evening. I think we're losing a real opportunity here that you know, this scheme has been uh, withdrawn from the Green Belt. It has come forward to committee this evening. Just, again, reiterate that comment. I think we've lost an opportunity here to do something uh, that can enhance... Um, uh, Chigal Village. And Councillor Patel, thank you. And um, Councillor Owen, did you want to say anything? Yeah, just quickly, but Councillor Patel mainly covered it there. I think the least we could do, whether we approve or decline this, is on the evergreen point. I think we need to make sure that uh, this beautiful house next door uh, is looked after. Um, I mean, I'd be furious if I was them and I was next to Greenbelt and suddenly this is there. So I understand their point. But my actual question was on the can we vote this down a planning reason because of volume of traffic? Because I heard some people saying it's going to add to the volume of traffic. But, I mean, that's everywhere in the district. So that, is that a planning issue or not? Because I'd imagine not. Mr. Mr. Ansell, would you like to answer that question? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, our, my advice, uh, the officer advice, would be that you should not refuse it on those grounds because you haven't got support from the Highway Authority. Um, and uh, can I just mention the crossing as well? Um, uh, any obligations have to be reasonably required by the development in terms of, of highway works. Um, and my advice on that would be the schools on that side of the road, the footways through to Chigwell Village, uh, a crossing uh, along this section is, is to serve other people rather than the residents of the development, and it's a very thin case. Okay. Um, if I come, in, uh, come on to Councillor Wixley. I yeah, just wondering if the officer could clarify something which I've heard tonight. He referred to the tree and landscape officer objecting to this in April, I think he said, and uh, that objection has been withdrawn. I wonder if you could explain what has happened in the meantime for that objection to be withdrawn. Uh, the, the tree and landscape officer was initially concerned about the, the treatments around the site boundaries, particularly adjoining Little West Hatch and at the, air, the boundaries to the, the northern part of the site and as part of the, the evolution of the scheme we've introduced, seen the introduction of this buffer which is five, to be five metres wide. Um, it's conditioned that the, the details of that will be agreed as part of the application and that is in, now meets with the tree officer's approval. Thank you Mr Ansell. Um, uh, Councillor Allgood, if you wanted to yes, say uh, anything new, I think. Yes, please. Uh, just two issues. Can you put the slide up showing the houses that are um, projected to go next door or adjacent to West Hatch House, please? So the... T no, it's not those ones. Uh, so the, the, top, the top plan shows the, the buildings front in the high road. So, and then, then you've, you've got the, the, um, the, 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 the buffer. And this block at the bottom here is southern. If you look at the, 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 the green annotation, so, so those properties back onto... Uh, and there will be there's five uh, six properties along there. That's a sample elevation of three of them. Sorry, 
sorry, second point then. Um, I always get confused on these parking numbers. So according to Essex Parking, what is the formula that we are working to? Why am I hearing two different versions of what's allowed and what's not allowed? Is it per unit? Is it per person? Is it per premises what? So the Essex Parking Standards are based on um, size of dwellings. Um, but there's, there's also a factor of whether the, the development is in a sustainable location that allows discounting of, of the full compliance standard. Now, in terms of the location of this development, it's 650 metres from um, Chigwell and 800 metres from Woodford. So within half a mile, effectively, of the settlements at either end. Um, which in broad terms is capable of being walked, so therefore that, that's why the Highway Authority have not objected to the number of parking spaces on the, on the development, taking into account their and our desire to reduce the overall level of car parking in development. Councillor Barlow, if you wanted to come back with, it. again, any, any new uh, points, please, and I think we'll then look to wrap up. I would just really like um, uh, Mr Ansell to verify that it is definitely not in the green belt, because I, I, I believe it is. I know that we keep going over this, and f forgive me on that, but there's, it's, it's just not making sense to me of when and who... Um, removed it at that time when there's other sites which one of our other councillors at Jubilee Parish Council has mentioned that he did not move it out of the green belt. Who gave it that permission to be moved out of the green belt? So the site was identified in the local plan process, it was in the submission version. So the special council meeting in March that approved the local plan following the modifications by the inspector effectively allocated the site and removed it from the green belt. Thank you, Mr. Ansell. Um, can Councillor Councillor Sanger, very quickly, and I think we can move to a vote. Can I ask it wasn't... I'm so sorry, but the inspector did not know it was in the green belt at that time, which is what I, I don't understand. Going back to the... When um, Councillor Williamson is saying that he feels he's in the different universe to us. Um, when we're talking about that, that again, which is what our, our fellow um, gentleman here um, mentioned to the Quality Review Panel in 2019, Mr Ansell, which you attended, it clearly states that this site, they, they feel, was not, um, was not the right site for this development. So I don't understand when he's saying 13 years, but in 2019, the review panel clearly states that they feel it was not the correct site. They actually also saying that here they have questions on the quality of the, of the scheme, including concerns about the green belt, the livability, well-being, and the feasibility of developing successful and sustainable development. So I'm I'm still very confused. Councillor Morgan, if you wanted to come back in very quickly, and then Councillor Yes, Sandler, please, because my original question up. wasn't answered, but uh, Councillor Barlow has just highlighted it. But I'd like to make a suggestion that we defer this decision to enable the staff to properly clar clarify to this council precisely when and on whose, whose authority was the redrawing of the green belt boundary removed from Chig 5, please. Mr. Ansell, if you wanted to, I think we've got uh, Graham Courtney actually. Um, Sorry. Uh, yeah, 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 thank you, Mr. Courtney. I forgot that uh, you were there for a minute. I'm not going to really be able to add anything more than Ian, Ian has already said, but I, I will just re emphasise, as Ian has said, the adoption of the local plan is the point when this site was removed from the green belt. That you can defer this item for, for, for further information, but that is the response you're going to go and get. Yeah, that, that is. Situation. But on whose authority? Oh, is, it in, yeah. is there a constitution? Is it? Member of the group. Oh, Cou that. Councillor Barlow, it, it came before full council yeah. uh, in March, I believe, or, or April, in fact. Um, Councillor Sanger, if I yeah, thank you very much. Um, as a final um, point, and then I, I think we're ready to move yeah. to the vote on this. Yeah.
Indeed. Thank you, Chairman, for letting me come back in. Uh, having now listened to my colleagues uh, and, and the rest of the, the councillors here, I'm of the opinion that especially the harm that will be done to the Grade 2 listed building, Little West Hatch, um, I'm in agreement that this is a very poor design and layout um, and it will be, I know, it will be a harm to the Grade 2 listed building. But I think this, this, uh, the developers need to go back and come back with a better design. Uh, for those reasons alone, I shall be not supporting this application tonight. Thank you. Thank you, members. I think our discussion has come to an end, and, and I'd like to um, move on to a formal vote um, for this. So the uh, officer's recommendation uh, for this application is to grant planning permission. Uh, can we sh have a show of hands for all those in favour of that recommendation? Two, Chairman. And all those against? Twelve. And any abstentions? One. Um, so that application has been refused. Uh, would anybody like to have um, a go at any grounds for refusals? Chairman, if I could propose that uh, the grounds for refusals are that this uh, development um, is not in keeping with the local area uh, in the way of poor design and layout, um, and also the harm it causes to the property adjacent to the Great Two Listed Building. Uh, if anybody else wants to add that. Lack of parking, I would imagine, as well. Sorry? And the sustainability. So, Councillor Pond? I would like, I, I agree with that, uh, and so far as it goes but to it, I would add uh, that it is n cannot be regarded as being in a sustainable location. Uh, it um, is uh, situated on a road where the bus service is only a school service and to make this uh, application acceptable, it would require pump priming for a, a permanent all day service uh, and over development and actually putting too much, too many units in a relatively small site. But I do agree with the point about the um, effect on the listed building and also no account taken of archaeological requirements. Um, do we have any other uh, members who want to propose a, a grounds for refusal? Councillor Allgood. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I don't think we can use um, overdevelopment because it's already been allocated for 65 units, whether we like it or not. So I don't think we can actually use that as a reason. Uh, Councillor Kaufman. Thank you, Chairman. Just so I also am concerned about that point, but clearly the council, when it adopted the local plan, put a finger in the air and thought maybe we can get, we're looking, thinking this is a windfall number of units. But we didn't have a detailed design scheme. We didn't. It's a generic number. When you put that number on that site and the associated um, amount of amenity space that would be required, the visitor parking and the number of parking spaces for that number of units, it clearly doesn't work. And that must be the point because the inspector will just otherwise chuck it back at us. But clearly, when you put 65 units, which are different style of units, these are flatted developments, which is not common. We have got dense housing on the north side of Chigal High Road. But this part of the High Road, if you look at just that plan, there's a massive amount of white space all around the housing. There's decent spacing around those properties. That's what we would expect for this part. And we don't have that. So therefore, that stands out like a sore thumb. And we need a better style and proposal of development, which I think must mean less units. Uh, council, uh, 
Uh, Mr Courtney, you've, you've got your hand in. Did you want to contribute? Uh, yes, sorry, I'm not suggesting uh, the same reason, but more procedurally, uh, obviously this recommendation, uh, or this certification deal, what recommendation would be subject to a legal agreement. So, uh, as ever, if we are seeking to refuse, uh, then the um, failure to secure the, the, the measures in that legal agreement should be a reason for refusal as well. That's just a suggestion for members. Uh, thank you, Mr Courtney. Very, very, um, very helpful uh, point there. Uh, Councillor Morgan, did you want to add on any reasons um, as part of the motion to refuse? Uh, yes, please. Also, the inadequate parking, because under the um, the Essex planning, it actually states that um, it can be reduced, but within 400 metres of a station. And here, we have that it's within 650 metres of a station. So... I think, given what Mr Ansel has said before, and the fact that there hasn't been any objections from the Highways Authority about this, I'd be very mindful not to want to include reasons for parking alone, or additional yeah. reasons I for mean, parking, as sorry, additional one. Yeah, um, sure. for, for this, because it's very likely that it will be overturned were this to go to appeal. We have a very clear document, okay. and potentially would be the Council would, would incur costs on it as well. Um, is there anybody else? I, I had a couple of additional ones, actually, which uh, I did mention as part of my contribution, and uh, that would uh, surround the loss of amenity space enjoyed by the resident at Tudor Close, Lyndhurst Rise and Chigwell High Road. Um, the fact that is out of keeping and incongruent with the current landscape and design of the area, as well as overlooking um, of the neighbour at the listed building, uh, which is Little West Hatch. So, members, we have a, um, a motion to refuse on those, I think, seven or eight um, grounds. I think I'm just going to have a discussion with uh, Mr Ansell. Just for the benefit of um, members here, as well as those uh, residents watching on the webcast, Mr Ansel, if you wouldn't mind reading out um, the, uh, the grounds for refusal that you've got as part of the, uh, the motion, please. Certainly, Chair. I've, I've noted that the development is out of keeping with the area and is in incongruous built form. Uh, harm to Little West Hatch, including from overlooking. So it's not in a sustainable location due to lack of transport. Uh, access and would require further public transport subsidy. The built form is out of character with the locality. The, the impact on residents to the north, uh, Lyndhurst and Tudor and so on, and the legal agreement not being secured at this stage. And I, I would also put in poor design, which is out of keeping with the local area. Yeah. Could we add layout as well? Uh, partic yeah, particularly looking onto the street scene. Uh, Councillor Wixley, did you want to add in anything else? Yeah, I've, it's a technical point, but I think the officer mentioned this. Uh, I've received an, uh, an email from a, a resident uh, objecting to this on the grounds of the heating system, the gas boilers. Um, I just wondered if, that, if there's any scope to object on those grounds uh, to a more sustainable type of heating. Uh, my view is that that can be dealt with by condition um, so it wouldn't be a ground for refusal. Uh, Councillor. A uh, desirability understand. of archaeological investigation of a site adjacent to a Roman road. Chair. Chair, again, there, there is a condition for archaeological excavation anyway, and that can be dealt with fully by condition. Thank you. So um, I think we can go to a vote on the uh, the grounds for refusal. So um, can we have all those in favour of the motion to refuse? Thirteen. So, sorry, sorry, just as as a point of order, do we have a, a, a seconder second for that for that motion? Sorry. 
So I proposed a motion. Is anybody there? Councillor Sango is, is seconding it. And is this is the same difference. <laughs> okay. Sorry, could you could you put your hands up for those against again? Sorry, if we just if we should we just run that back yeah, again just okay. so it's nice and clear. Yeah. So um Councillor Sango, would you like to propose those grounds as, as grounds for refusal? I, I will second it. And can we now have um, a show of hands for those members who are in favour uh, of that motion? Twelve. And all those against? None. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Right. And, and any abstentions? Two. Okay, so uh, that application has been refused. Um, so if we move on to um, the next agenda item, which uh, is application uh, EPF 076023. Uh, which is 5 Staples Road, Loughton, uh, IG10 1HP. Uh, Mr Ansel, over to you. Thank you, Chair. So uh, this is a, a detached 19th century house in the Staples Road conservation area within an area further protected from development by an Article 4 direction. The building and its neighbour are recognised as key buildings of townscape merit in the conservation area character proposal of 2014. Um, the application proposes to replace the existing front door and surrounds with a similar timber and glass panelled form. Um, matters relating to the application are all to, concerned with the character of the heritage asset. The conservation officer views are set out in the report that the existing is likely to be original which adds to the recognised significance of the site. Evidence points to the door being in generally good condition. The application points to the need to upgrade the entrance due to its condition and the need for draft proofing, but very little support and evidence of that is included. No evidence is produced of any effort to remedy the issues without loss of the historic fabric and Historic England offer specific guidance on energy efficiency, particularly through draft proofing in historic buildings. Thus, as it stands, the loss of the heritage asset has not been justified, and officers suggest that the application should at this time be refused. Thank you, Mr Ansel. Uh, we've got one speaker on this application, which is the applicant, Mr Jake Marshall. Uh, you have three minutes. Thank you, Chair. Evening members, I appreciate you taking their time here. Uh, just three points to make. Um, first, the significance of the front door. Um, as far as I'm aware, no one from the council has been to look at the door itself or the frame or the wider setting of the door in relation to the street. All you've seen is that photo that I took. The reality is that the front of the house is set back from the street, as you can see from the plan, and is screened by dense planting along the street edge. And the, the door itself is recessed quite far in, in, in a porch. And when viewed in that context, it's clearly not a prominent feature of the overall Staples Road street scene. The objections mentioned that our door is the same as our, one of our neighbours' doors. Uh, it's certainly similar, but due to the respective location of the two houses and the way the house is set back and the secluded nature of the door, it's actually quite hard to find a spot where you can see both of those doors at the same time. It's also um, worth adding that on, on the street as a whole, and as noted in the conservation area character appraisal, Fewer doors have survived on Staples Road, fewer original doors have survived, and there are a wide variety of sizes, shapes and designs of front door in the nearby houses. So that aspect of the conservation area has already been diluted. So the, the significance of our front door and therefore the resulting harm to the conservation area of changing the door has, in my view, been overstated. The second point is the condition of the door. Uh, it's certainly old. I don't think anyone can prove it's original. Um, as mentioned in the heritage statement, it's in reasonable condition, but we had a flood a couple of years ago that made the frame sod and distort. It's drafty in the winter due to gaps around the door uh, and the fact it's single glazed. It sticks in the summer when it expands and, and the location of the locks, I think you can see on the photo in the center, don't comply with modern security recommendations. Also because it's solid wood, it makes for a very dark hallway. 
Now, I'm all for keeping uh, old doors and period features, but the truth is that nothing lasts forever. My house isn't listed. I don't want to live in a museum. And it, sh it must surely be the case that, within reason, the comfort and security of the homeowner should be taken into account. Uh, finally, the lack of consideration of the new door. Uh, in all the papers I've seen, no consideration has been given to the proposed replacement door. No balanced judgment has been applied. There's been no consideration of the way any perceived harm is mitigated through the good design of the replacement, all of which I understand to be a requirement of that policy DM7. Uh, the design we've chosen is made to a very high specification, uh, as you've seen from the pack. It's solid wood, uh, double-aged etched glass, modern locks and draft proofing, all from a very well-regarded London door company. It's certainly a door that's fit for the next 100 years. It's also a, a Victorian design with some lovely period features and is very much in keeping with the rest of the house and the overall street scene. Um, in my view, it does not detract from the overall character and appearance of the wider conservation area. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. Um, we have one councillor present um, for this application. Councillor Kaufman, did you want to add anything? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I'm a bit of a bind on this one because I've got an officer's recommendation to refuse. Um, it's difficult to go against that recommendation. It doesn't look a, a bad looking door to me. Um, I know it's a, quite an important conservation area here and there's a lot of the neighbors seem to be saying it should be left alone. Um, I don't feel overly strongly about it because the door is, it looks in the right sort of color, the right sort of format. But I'm, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to wait to see what other members have to say because I, I, I'm, I have a refusal recommendation from the officers and a conservation officer who's obviously looked at this in great detail. Um, so I wonder if any other members have a, an, a, an opinion. Councillor Owen? I mean, uh, most of us in the LRA have been to Councillor Pond's house next door. Um, maybe I should have declared an interest, in fairness. But um, it is identical. I wouldn't know I was in one house or the other looking at it. I agree the new door is also nice. Um, my main issue is that um, the applicant says he doesn't want to live in a museum, but it's in a conservation area. So it kind of is when it comes to the front of the house, I'm afraid. Okay. Uh, Councillor Williamson. Thank you, Chair. I, I'm really conflicted on this one. Um, I, I think... The applicant has come forward with a, a, an excellent proposal, but I also have to take into account the conservation officer's comments. Um, yeah, I, I'm like everybody else. I'm totally conflicted on this decision. I still, um, I think I'm edging towards the conservation officer, but um, it, it is a, a really difficult one. Uh, Councillor Morgan. Sorry, I have looked at this and I still can't work out, and I don't know if I'm even allowed to ask this question. Is the door still set back or is it going to be moved forward and the surround disappearing? I couldn't work that bit out, sorry. I, I believe it, it looks like it's going to be in the same place, but Mr Ansel, if you wanted to yeah. confirm that. Yes. I think Mr, Mr Ansel has confirmed, confirmed that it will remain in the same place. Um, uh, Councillor Allgood and then Councillor Patel after. Yes, thank you. Uh, again, sorry for being new. Can someone explain what our responsibilities to the conservation officer are exactly? Do we have to obey him? Is it a case of what is, what's, the, what's the score? <laughs> sorry. Uh, him or her. We, 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 we don't have to slavishly um, take their advice, but um, the the, the Case officer has, has reviewed the comments, um, will have been to the site, um, and he's recommending refusal. Uh, Councillor Annika Patel. Um, Chairman, I'm with uh, my ward colleague, um, Councillor Williamson, on this. I think if um, you know, we've, we've got specialist officers in these, in, in these backgrounds, like as our uh, conservation officer has said, has, has, um, has made a comment on this, and I think we should. Um, um, we should take that on board when making a decision on, on this application. Uh, anybody else? Any other members? Or shall we move to a vote? Well, Councillor Wixley. Yeah, I think it is a, is a difficult one, but uh, because the replacement door, it, it looks a very good replica of the original door, but bearing in mind what the conservation officer has said, I, I'm inclined to go along with that view. 
And uh, Councillor Carfman, if you want to come back. I'm sorry to be a pain. Could, could we, because could, I don't like to say no, um, could we defer this one? I just have one more go back to the conservation and say what, what, it looks perfectly okay, but there are objectors. You know, is it because there will be a, a light shining through into the street from the hall that doesn't currently, is, what's the problem? I, d I don't really get it. So the, the, the concerns the conservation officer has is that the existing door may be um, an original feature uh, and, and the surrounds may be original um, and it, there, there may be the possibility of uh, repairs and upgrade to the existing door that retains the historic feature um, and as, as I mentioned uh, Historic England's advice uh, includes a specific method of draft proofing on historic buildings. Thank you, Mr. Ansell. Councillor Kaufman, does that satisfy your, your query? Well, it doesn't really, because uh, I, I, on once I have to go with the, with the Conservation Officer's recommendation, because I'm out of my depth as to say why we, I shouldn't go with it. Um, and that's why I prefer not to turn it down, to just see if we can't get this sorted out without it coming through the public arena like this, because we've been put in a ridiculous position. Uh, Councillor Barlow. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Councillor Kaufman here. I, I just, I fail to understand why it can't be replaced. I'm sorry, it looks really, really nice. I do understand about what they're saying about, you know, it's, it might be an original and what have you, but even originals can wear, and there's wear and tear, and you know we're moving forward it's not like it's out of character with it so I, i'm failing to understand this as well uh, councillor mead did you want to contribute i really like the um the new one but it looks fake to me i think the wind maybe the with the light the window shouldn't be in it um as nice as it is um, I prefer the old door, and that's why you have an old property, if you can keep it. It's in a conservation area, um, so, yeah, I like the old door. <laughs> Councillor Williamson, did you want to come back in? Just, thank you, Chair. Just very briefly, I, I, I think it's the duty of this committee to make decisions rather than... Um, uh, we, we have the conservation officer's recommendation. I, I, I think we should make the decision tonight, but that's just my personal opinion. I, I am minded to, to echo what Councillor Williams said. Is, is said I think you know to avoid any you know, um, congestion at further uh, subcommittees, it, it would be preferable for us to, to make a decision on this. And I, I'd like to, to go ahead with a, a formal vote uh, for this application. So. Um, the planning officer's recommendation is to refuse this application. Um, all those in favour of the refusal? No. And all Nine. those against? Zero. And abstentions? Four. Um, so if we just go... I think Vivian, we need to give grounds for... Uh, no, because it was 9 for okay. refusal. Okay. So the application has been so, refused. So that application yeah. has been refused. Um, I've just got Mr Courtney back onto to the Teams link. Did you want to uh, say anything before we formally close the meeting? No, 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 no. After the last no. agenda item. Fine, OK. Um, moving on to the final agenda item, which is exclusion of public and press. There are no items, Jim. And, and um, to officially close the meeting at 8.34. Thank you, members.